You are now listening to the Yeshiva League Pass Tip Off. Ari, it is episode number six. Uh, Ran out of fingers out. finally. You know, I waited a whole week to see if you were going to figure out how to put a uh, count on two hands. I wasn't sure huh. if you could do it. Well, we listen, we accepted a challenge here because we said episode number six, we're going to try to have more than one guest. And it's not, we didn't just pick some random schmoes off the street. You know, we, um, we, we might have found the biggest trifecta in all of, in all of Jewish basketball. No, no, no. And, no, no. The, the biggest brothers in California, the basketball boys. We got, Lamel, we got Lonzo, Lamelo, and Leangelo here, just so you know. This is exciting. They're all going to be wearing their yarmulkes and everything. This is the big, now, the big LA th- uh, trifecta. Now, I, I will say that. I mean, we, we pulled off a feat because we, are, we found three guys in three time zones and somehow, even with your math skills, we figured out like an, an hour of the day where this was doable. Well, that's why we have a director of uh, communications who handles all that for us. It was not you. Thanks, Coach Coleman. Okay. Let's call it what it is. Now, before we bring him on, because, uh, you know, we got to we gotta thank the people that made this happen. People who put the bagels in our, the butter in our bagels. That's exactly right. Literally. So, so got to get a bagel. Now, last week I showed off the bagels. Everyone's seen a bagel. Okay. Today's going to be the pastry episode. We got five people on the show, so there's going to be a lot of time for me to get into this. I got the same thing last week, but uh, today, today we're going to get today into this. Today it's fresh. And, yeah, let me tell you, look at, the, look at you see these, look at these muffins. By the way, you did know, you even say where this is all coming from? I know you can yeah, see right it. on the screen. Gotta get I know, a bagel, but you got it. You got to get a bagel you here can, located. And, and although you, you don't know this, this is a scone, Ari. A skunk? What's that? It's a scone. Fine. Okay. I, you don't eat these things. When's, nah. the, when's the last time you ate a pastry? By the I'm way, I'm sure our guests don't eat that stuff either. I mean, they're probably training 24 hours a day. No, I, I will. We'll, we'll find out, but I will bet that they do. Now, yeah, uh, right. listen, got to get a bagel. It's not just bagels. They have a salad bar. That's where you could find Ari uh, with all of his with all my salad fruits. bar-y type friends. And um, that sushi, they have catering. By the way, I mentioned it. I mentioned it in last week's episode. They uh, they catered my uh, son's bar mitzvah. They are great. They right. have and uh, I thought about it. Turns out uh, they catered my son's bar mitzvah too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and yeah, we did not get a two for one special. We didn't even know each other back then. So got to get a big. Also inaccurate. My son's bar mitzvah was last year. Oh, okay. So there you go. But it's the best. It's a great bagel place here in five towns. They do catering. They go to Jersey, New York, everywhere. When you need a bagel, got to get a bagel. Exactly. They are the best. Next, the number one attorney for both immigration. And personal injury. Now, imagine this. You're flying into the United States illegally and you get injured. And then you need, you're in a situation where you have a personal injury suit and an immigration case at the same time. Now, I've seen it a thousand times, honestly. Practically happens twice a day. If that's your situation or anywhere kind of just in between the two spectrums, Gary Mendel's your guy. And uh, Gary got a personal shout out on last week's episode he, from yeah. uh, from Yogi. He that got was... a personal shout out from Yogi. He also is uh, wants to send uh, Muscles Mandel, who was a teammate of uh, two of three of uh, the of the Halper brothers, Eitan and Simcha. So Muscles Mandel is uh, a teammate from YU, and he's uh, also sends his love out to everyone. And yeah, Gary Mandel is uh, a great lawyer. And uh, if you, if you run into problems, don't call us. Call Gary Mandel. Don't call us. Definitely don't call us. Uh, unless you need to get bailed out. Ari's got bail money. That's what I hear. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I owe you. Speaking, speaking of which, uh, the Lion's Den. Oh, All right, the, tell, us, tell us about the Lion's Den. The Lion's Den. I mean, there's so much to talk about the Lion's Den, but, but you can you know, in this, talk in about this, some of it. Yeah, we'll you talk know. about it quickly. If you're looking to, uh, to get into some, have some personal trainers work with you, you know, get yourself uh, out of the rut that this uh, year of COVID has caused, call them up the Lion's Den. They also have a program for kids after school program where they're going to play ball, play sports, really build self-esteem and really work with youngsters. Who who runs that program? You know what? He's this tall, handsome guy. I think his name is uh, initials AW. I don't know. I'll have to look him up. I think it's Ari Wickes. That might be the person. So Hmm. yeah, if you're looking for uh, looking for some training called the Lions Den, and that leads us to our next sponsor. Bam. Not to be confused with the Ball Brothers. This is the Ballers Basketball Academy. If you are looking for an after summer, August 23rd to 26th, at Hafter, all the gyms, they're going to be hosting a basketball camp going into first through eighth grade. 
You're going to learn skills, drills, NBA players, maybe a helper brother. I mean, they're going to have all the all the famous people at the camp, and it's going to be a good time. And uh, come down, leagues, games, check it out. Ballers Basketball Academy. If you're interested, 917-837-8643. If they pick up, they may say, hello, Ballers Basketball Academy. Hello, Lions Den. You never know. And that's uh, that's the story of our sponsors, right, Jay? I'm I'm physically sick. Speechless. I'm I'm literally I'm having a physical reaction to what just happened on this. Speaking program. of it, let's let's get to this show. I am excited for the. Give us the introduction, Jay. Like, All right, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do here. I'm going to press a button, and uh, with the press of a button, and by the way, you know what? I I uh, another button I need to press. No, it's not the record button. Oh, I thought it was the recording. The, I'm like I can't no, do no, those no. jokes again. Got, no, it's got to get the watermark. It's back. All right. The tip off oh. watermark is back. Actually, who am I kidding? I, I could just put it in and anyway, it'll be there the whole time. It's like nothing just happened. The last 30 seconds, it's like poof, gone from your mind. But I'm gonna press a different button. And uh for the first time ever, we're gonna have three it's guests bar for a total of five of us on screen. Look at that. Look Whoa. What Look what I did. That's a lot of hair on one Look screen. What the bottom I did. I, welcome to the program, all three Halper brothers who are all still on mute, and they're all going to unmute now. I think, I hope. One, it's the it's the the one that says mute. The oldest one got it first. No surprise. You know that's Two. that's how it should work. All right, we're all unmuted, guys. Welcome to the show. What well, would yeah, you even say who they are? Oh, I mean, it's in the description. I mean, the, uh, yeah, but these, are, these are three generations. Come on, it's the first family of California. Yeah, th these are three generations of some of the finest uh, finest basketball to come out of the Golden State. Uh, Eitan Simcha and Avi Halpert, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you for having us. Happy that was not in the right order, by the way. No, right? no, I was going to say, it, it's Simcha, it was, Eitan, it was in, and Avi. It was in the order that it was in in, in Zoom. That's, uh, that's where I got it from. Uh, guys, so this episode, uh, fir first, we got to give shout outs where, where they're due. We had uh, Coach Coleman, who has now had the opportunity to coach all three of you uh, out in L.A. And Avi has to watch what he says. He still coaches him. So just so we know that. <laughs> right. And and we were uh, we were talking. We said, you know, uh, we were just getting the show going. He said, what would be a good idea for an episode? And he he came back to Ari and with this golden idea. Of, uh, of having this trifecta. And then I had, a, I mean, with the buttons and the sizing and the zoo, I mean, but we got it's here. It's a lot to do. Out. We do a lot of work for the Halper boys, just so you guys know. So yeah, Coach out. Coleman was was the, uh, he was the orchestrator of the offense. And we do, like I said, we thank him for putting this together, for bringing you guys here. And just so we know, we got we got Simcha in Israel, we got Eitan in New York, and Avi in California. So that that's another feat. I mean, that yeah. is how, how we pulled that off. I uh, I don't know. But let, let's let's get into the story of the Halper brothers. So we know Avi's in 10th grade right now. Um, he's hoping to maybe have a season. If not, he's the 10th grader. God willing, he has many more years in high school. Well, only two more years, God willing. Uh, just and, just right. two. Uh, right. God, and then, God willing. Uh, college, college aspirations. He's a uh, shall have a firehawk right currently. Aton Halper is – this show is going to be – by the time this show um, hits, it may not be his career high anymore, but he's coming off a 32-point-ish effort against uh just some team that why you beat because they all they do is win uh steven's steven's okay. tech was that a time was that who it was yeah okay so he's coming off a 32 point game very efficient i think 12 to 15 um not to be outdone by his uh his older bro simcha halpert who has taken the uh sport from being a yu legend and really helped resurrect in the program up to israel and playing professionally now so they are they are the the Halper boys, and they are here to uh, talk about their uh, story. Jay, are we, um, are we frozen? No. Okay, so maybe I just them. Okay. Yeah. So tell Sounds us about right. tell us about growing up. We want to start with in the household. So you guys are all about two, three years apart? Yeah. So the difference between me and Aton is two years, and I think Aton and Avi is six years. But we actually yes. have one brother as well who is um, three years older than me. Also a ball player. Oh, hold on. Let me get him on the phone. Where is he? In Antarctica? We can probably you know, put him <laughs> on. That's not a problem. <laughs> he's also in LA. He's, a, he's a, in LA. Stein Diamond. Oh, so okay. these, I, I mean, we got to start with the obvious. Growing up, these, ba I mean, the backyard battles must have been epic. Yeah. The, they were pretty intense. Um, I say a lot of bloodshed, a lot of injuries happened over there. It's a small court. Um, but honestly, it was mostly just a two-on-one of me and Aton trying to beat 
our older brother Yassi and Avi kind of watching um, until Avi got a little bit older and able to hold his own. And we ended up playing a two on two. It was me and Avi versus Eitan and Yassi. We played a two on two um, at Chalheve. It was a whole charity event. Um, it was it was incredible. But the backyard is where is where we started. But I, it's funny you said. I was going to say, what, did you guys charge admission for the backyard? I mean, did you foresee the future of the Halpert uh, <laughs> no. trilogy? Yeah, it was nothing like that. It was nothing like that. That's, that's where we, we developed. We were we weren't we weren't good back then, really. So was was your was your were your parents uh very were they were they athletes of themselves growing up or I mean not that necessarily your parents have to be good at something for you to fo- follow your own path. I see Aton smiling and laughing. I want him to give us the answer. What what's what's the answer to that, Aton? The answer is we really we don't know. So <laughs> my dad's my dad loves watching sports, not really into playing sports. Um, he said he liked to play soccer occasionally. So like. That's a big what if. My mom from Iran, she claimed that she was a big volleyball star. Um, and she, she t- yeah, again, we have no, we don't really know. Jay claims he played high school sports too, but okay, go on. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, so she said she was, a, she played a lot of volleyball when she was growing up. And like, that's where we get our like athletic genes from. Gotcha. Okay. So, so wait, does your father try to, does your father try to make a claim to that? I mean, is that, no, I don't even care. Not at all. No. Unbelievable. That, that's so, I mean, listen, Ari, we're only like three minutes in. I'm already surprised. I mean, my assumption would have been that, you know, your father was uh, semi pro. Yeah, you know, played, you know, played at YU in the heyday. Rec League legend. Nothing like that. <laughs> not even not even a little bit close. No. OK, so what for, so you so you guys, you, you, you started, obviously, you all had a was basketball your first sport as growing up. Was that always what you guys, you know, you drifted to? That's what you wanted to play most? um yeah i think it's really our most of our only sports we don't really play anything else other than basketball we mess around in the in the park of football on shabbat occasionally but uh really basketball has been the only the only constant right sport. is Bobby that kind of a california choice. is that a california like thing like there aren't you know is is basketball like the sport for jewish kids in california I mean, you're, you're, we're, we're all biased but yeah we, we, we say yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah a lot of kids in la grew up playing like pretty intense baseball i thought i think like growing up is def- definitely baseball in la then like once everyone kind of like gets a little bit older it turns into basketball and and floor I, you know it's funny ari i've never in all the years i've never asked this question uh is floor hockey a thing out there no not at all doesn't yeah, like, let's simply just you just like broke out in a rash he's like what is that it doesn't no, sound yeah. like a sport no it is no a sport to uh, us floor, east coast like, jewish yeah. Jewish people. We, we play that in Yeshiva League. Yeah, we, we don't have basements for it. We don't have basements. We're not right. forced down. Ah, there you go. <laughs> there that, that's called knee hockey. That's not called uh, yeah. Yeshiva League. <laughs> that's that's, that's different. So, okay. So you, you, you grow up. You guys are obviously, you're into playing ball. And you you go, did you all go to Shalhevet as elementary school? Or Shalhevet was just a, high, is just a high school now? I don't know. Or is it Eula? How did, how did uh, growing up, where did you go to school? Uh, so we all went to... Uh, Jewish called Helcom Hill Hebrew Academy, about two blocks from our houses, and then we went mm-hmm. to Charlotte for high school. God, was it was closed down by the time most of us were uh, the middle school. Charlotte was closed down by then. Was was there a recruiting battle? Eula didn't call and offer you know a bigger pool or anything, or <laughs> no, nothing like that. No, okay, almost. so almost. so, so you, you go to you go to Shaw have it, and obviously, I'm sure growing up you played in a lot of you probably played in some leagues. Obviously, you didn't just become great ballers in high school. That was really started at at the early age. Did you guys go to any summer camps to uh, to hone your skill, or what? What are guys in LA doing for the summer as they're as they're growing up? Um, we went to a sleepaway camp with the Mosheva Wild Rose. Just a normal normal summer. There's no like stepping up camps, no basketball training. None of us ever had one on one training with the coach or anything like that. Right. Okay. So we always so did our own thing. Wait, which Mosheva did you go to? Wild Rose. Ah, Wisconsin. I went to Mosheva. I was gonna say is that one you didn't get kicked out of, Jay, or? No, no, I went there. Didn't get kicked out. I went, I went to, to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. in Pennsylvania. That's where I went. Like way back when. Oh, Wait, that's where you went too? Yeah. That's where I went. Yeah, but we're like 20 years apart. I'm 20 years that's younger. Right. No, that's uh, that's inaccurate. No, not true. Um, so, okay. So you, wow. so you it go. Is, it you, is still around, by the way, Ari. Yes. And no, yeah. it absolutely is. Not a sponsor yet, but you know, we can call you if you're interested. So you, you go. So now let's get to Shall Have It. So Shall Have It. We know that uh, we had Coach Coleman on, and we know the program of Shaw Habit is is really is really big. So simple. We'll start with you. We'll we'll go chronologically. So you get to Shaw Habit um, freshman year. You're a JV player. You're a varsity player. How did how did that work? Obviously, you know. So similar to YU, um, the basketball program at Shaw Habit wasn't really developed. 
so much. Um, my older brother was a senior that year. And there's a kid below him, Jojo Fallis, who was a junior at the time, who brought in his new coach who had one year there. His name is Colin Jamerson. Um, so, and he's, he was terrific for me for my development skills and all that. Uh, he stayed with me throughout high school. He was my head coach always. And he brought Ryan in to be like our strength and conditioning guy. Um, but the first year was, it was great. It was really an experience. Um, we lost, we went, I don't remember what happened in say yet, but we lost in a crazy game in Sarah check. Um, and yeah, it was just a great experience. Like with my older brother for the, for, for that one year. It was great. Right. So, so, I, so I played, I played varsity from the start. Sorry. Yeah. So you played varsity from the start. Oh, so right yeah. away. So was, was there, there even a, a JV was there team even or a no? JV? There was a JV team. Um, and occasionally when there weren't, when there weren't any uh, games in the same day, I would play a JV game. But if there were games in the same day, JV and varsity, you can only play one of those games. So I'd play with the varsity team. Right. Wow, so that's, you, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You were playing as much yeah. basketball as you can. So, all right. Now, so, yeah. sir, now th- this is obviously going to come up throughout this episode. So we might as well, might as well start early. But what were the expectations, you know, for you, Simcha, when you came to high? I mean, you have this older brother now who's, uh, you know, you had, you had big shoes to fill. So what, what was it like for you? And, and um, Avi, you could prepare the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was, it's, it's always just go out there and play. It's not like I'm, like, I'm I feel any pressure from expectations or anything. I'm just trying to enjoy myself, have a good time and, and do what I do. You know, it's not like I feel pressure to try to fill my brother's shoes at all. Something like that. Right. You, you, were, you were kind of paving your own path. I mean, you had kind yeah, of exactly. abilities you, you trusted and you were different players, paid. different. It's we're completely different, you know? Right. So, so you, it's funny. I've, I've actually referred to you as like the Clay Thompson. I've seen you, you know, I've watched you and why you, um, you know, seen you on play, not in person, but uh, you know, and obviously at this day and age, it's like in person, you see everything on social media. So you, you, you kind of get the ball. You don't need a lot of dribbles. You have the purest jump shot, you know, of someone probably not in the NBA. And, you know, how did you work on that to really get to that level? I mean, I can only imagine countless hours of you just, you know, perfecting that jump shot of yours. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, it is a, a lot of just reps, just repping it over and over and over again. And it's also just, I think I'm very good with details and small details that I, I, I focus on, like whether it's a really like where my finger is, where my, where my feet are, you know, I really focus on those small little details that I think change, change, uh, for me, I said touch my touch and, and my shot. Um, right. but really it's just, it's just the reps. It's just getting in the gym, getting a shots of every day and hard work, and hard work over over again. putting yeah, in the time, constant shots. Right. So, so a ton, and, and again, I'm going chronologically here. Aton, so you and in, in, in our background, you know, we have we have a sideline reporter, so we got some information. So you are an excellent shooter, but you're more of a, a slasher. Also, you know, you're you're gonna you're gonna take the ball in the paint, and obviously your jump shot is great. Did you who did you mold your game after? And it could be a brother, it could be an NBA player, or you know, wh- where does your game come from? And you know, what what are your strengths as a basketball player? Loaded question. Um, <laughs> who do I mold my game after? Um, I always thought I played like a Jewish Derrick Rose, like, like couldn't really shoot like a younger, like didn't like to shoot so much. Like kind of like, I, I like my three, I like playing D and just like going to the basket. That's kind of what I did. My shot like really like developed like my senior year of high, like my 11th grade year and on, like that's kind of when I started to be able to like actually shoot, like not just in practice, but in games. Yeah. It happened, um, that, that helps when simpler graduates, right? You can all of a sudden you get to see the ball a little more, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, like I just never really consider myself a shooter. Like that's just honestly, I, I, I can shoot. I just, I think when I shoot too much, like it ruins my game a little bit. But well, unless I, like, you're where, where I 15 shots and it's, uh, then it's fine. When, when the ball's going in every time you shoot, you should shoot as much as you can. I mean, you know, I'm not a, I'm a coach. In, diamond, but, in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So that that's actually that's a good uh, Derek Rose, right? He's not really known as a shooter. He takes it to the hole, but you know he can he can shoot. And he's actually developed his shot as well. So so we got the shooter, we got the Derek Rose. Now we're going to Avi. Avi. Now uh, now before we go to Avi, oh. uh, I mean I'm not spilling anything here. The, he said it publicly. Oh, we I asked know. Coach Coleman who the best Halpert brother is, and he said maybe not today, but projected for the future. Avi, he said it's you. I mean, this is this is not my words. These are right. I'm just I'm just a vessel here. You know, I just I just repeat what's told to me. Uh, what do you say about that? And and you know, what do you think about your game uh, compared to your brothers? Um, I think definitely in a few years I'll definitely be the best. Just like right now, it's hard. Like if we play like one on one with my brothers, like like, <laughs> like someone someone mute Simcha. 
Yeah, go on. <laughs> um, it's just hard to compete like physically, but I think in a few years, like once I develop more, I'll definitely be the best at all. Right, Co- Coach Coleman actually he said he said you're of all three brothers. You're the pure point guard. He said he says you like you know Simcoe is the shooting guard and you know obvious. I'm sorry, eight times more of a combo guard. He said you have the vision on the court. You're more of a point guard. So. Is that is that is there a player that you mold your game after, or do you see yourself as a true point guard? You know, when you're on the court. Um, definitely last year because I was a freshman on the varsity team and I had like three options above me, so I definitely have to play more true point guard. Where like versus middle school, like I just take the ball up and like do almost whatever I want. But uh, now that I had people above me, I had to like pass more, see the court more. Um, but yeah, this year I'm look, looking to like make, make shots for myself now. Right. I love sounds, how, sounds like a seasoned veteran I, for a 10th grader. By the way, I love how he just laid down the gauntlet right away. Just said, yeah, no, I'm the best one. Well, I, look, I love it. Honesty is the best when you're yeah, young, no, it's, right? It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I, uh, you did play you know, that line all morning. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't prepare anything, but he, in yeah. his head, he was prepared. Yeah. He's like, they're going to ask me this. I'm ready. I'm bringing the it. first words I say is going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> love <laughs> it. Now, now. <laughs> Now, Avi, you go, Lamelo. <laughs> listen, Avi. So, so question for you, and you know, I think this is a big thing when you have older brothers. You know, how much, especially becoming sort of that point guard. I mean, how much of that was growing up with older brothers? Obviously, you talk about even today. You know, you're in high school now, and and the physical uh, part of the game, uh, you still see, you know, room to kind of grow and catch up to your brothers. Was that a big deal growing up? I mean, do you kind of become that point guard because in the backyard you're the smallest and uh, you know, last to get the opportunities. How, how did, how do you think having older brothers, uh, who are so, you know, good at the game helped you develop? Um, well, like when I took my older brothers, I know that they're going to want to shoot and they're not going to want a 10 year old me shooting the ball. So definitely had to learn how to like pass to others and create options for other people to score that are more able to than I was. Right. So yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. That, that makes complete sense. So, so you have you have these big battles. You guys are you're obviously forging your own path. So, Simcha, tell us about and again, just uh, chronologically seems to work here. So you mentioned Sarachek before, and Shalhevit is somewhat of a newish high school. Like how long has Shalhevit been around as a high school estimate? Probably around thirty years now. Oh, so I don't know what the yeah, heck I'm talking about. It's very new, Ari. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, fair, yeah, it's fairly new, thirty years. Okay, coming. So just, it's, it's awesome. around thirty years. Right, I'm just thinking when Coach Coleman came, that's when the uh, the basketball program maybe took off, or or maybe when yeah, the Alport yeah. came. That's, Pretty that's much. That's kind of when it took off. So you you um as a, as an LA baller, right? You're you're not in the Yeshiva League. You're playing. You know, Coach Coleman's told us about all this. You play in different leagues and public schools, and you have a a, a rivalry with Eula, which are not in the same league, but you play against. So how did it work as a player? We know from Coach Coleman. Was your ultimate, like, were you always thinking Sarachek? You know, you want to show the New Yorkers, the East Coast ballers, you know, that we got game here. Was that always the ultimate goal to get to Sarachek as, uh, as your career began in high school? Not really. My, our, we kind of look at it as two seasons. Um, so we have our first season, which we, we kind of care more about, which is going out there and, uh, and winning our conference, winning our, winning, our, going to a tournament, hopefully playing it in state. Um, but Sarachek is definitely something that, People, I guess, talk about more. It's more, it's bigger. It's bigger for the school to win Sarajek and it to win CIF. Um, but for us personally, we, we really cared about the about the CIF and, and trying to win that as much as we could. Sarajek was a was a bonus secondary season um, that we that we enjoyed playing in for sure. What, what was what was the farthest you got as a player in, in the in your in your C, it's CIA? Is that what it's? Uh, yeah, conference? it's uh, C A. What is it again? GIF and so CIF. Wow, it's been so long. That was yes, called yeah, California yeah. League. The Cal- so, so what yeah. was the farthest you got in that? So we that? we went to the championship my my sophomore year with JoJo Fallis. We had a great like starting five and a solid, decent bench. Um, so we played in the Anaheim Center against like a seven two month there and just we just crumbled <laughs> month again. Yeah, that yeah. that always hurts to run into a seven two guy, especially. But yeah. you, actually, you're pretty tall, right? How tall are you, Simba? I'm six three. Six three. Cool. All right. So yeah. that's that's a, so you so you um and when did when did you start thinking of uh why you? Because I know just so you know, I don't know, and I'm gonna assume of course you've watched our other podcasts, especially with former coach uh Stein, who's your coach. Bro. You know, we yeah. asked him, we said, Who's the biggest recruit you ever got? And we're all ready. We had the Ryan Terrell, you know, music behind us and the videos of him. Yeah, and Ari goes, has both his home and away jersey and a warm up jacket. Right, exactly. 
He yeah. goes, he went, he goes, he didn't go there. He goes, he goes with uh, Simcha Halpert and Donnie Katz. He said, you guys are really the, uh, the program changer. So was there a lot of recruiting? I mean, clean recruiting, obviously, to get you to come to, uh, to YU, or was that something that uh, you had always envisioned in your future? Yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty against YU, honestly, growing up, um, just because, like, it was a Jewish, it was a, the whole thing, I was very against it. Um, and then I just, came, senior year came around, and I had no I had no AU, I had no film, I had no stats, I had nothing from, from high school. Um, and I spoke to Elliot at Sarajek, he pulled me aside, he spoke to me, and uh, he recruited me, he really he did a great job selling me on the dream of YU and, and where it could be in. And I, I know I just wanted to continue playing basketball. And I love the sport and something that I know I'm good at and I enjoy playing. Um, so Israel, so I went to Israel that year with Donnie Katz. We, we had a great, we formed like our own, in the AFI, in the Israel like Yeshiva League, I guess. We created our own like team of players who were going to YU. Um, and we just, we dominated that league and we just had a great time. And I was just training, getting ready, looking forward to YU. And it, it worked out great for me, honestly. Right now, so, so this was so you didn't even this was your senior year Sarah check you said, yeah. That's so when that's, that's when I really pushed it. Yeah. So at that point, I'm assuming you have it's time. He didn't even fly out to you, cheap guy. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> so at that point, you had you obviously you probably had your Israel plans already, right? You 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 knew yeah. what that, but so I mean that's late, you know, at the, to to kind of start thinking about a college at that point that's it was late in the game. it was pretty much it was it was go to yu or go to um, community college in la for two years and then transfer to usc or ucla the classic like la route and, you know? and so were you thinking at that point like uh, I'm, I'm done with basketball you know as a uh, it never felt like that i never felt like that i knew i was gonna play somewhere i don't know i, I just i knew why was always an option i know i could always come here and play um but i never i don't know never really dawned on me that i'd be done after, after that Sarah check Right. So that, that, so, okay. So let me, now let's, let's, let's uh, go to Aton. So Aton, so you, you you have, you have obviously a standout career and shall have it. I believe not positive. Did you win? Did you win a Sarah check uh, title or that was right before, right after you? Uh, right after me. Okay. So we won't talk about that. Then. No. So, so you, you go, you go and you play, what was the, what was the farthest you got as a, as a firehawk in the California league? In the CIF, we went to the championship my senior year. Wow. Did you run into a 7-3 guy that year? or <laughs> No, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. We lost We lost by like by two or something like that. We, we lost in like a cr- crazy, crazy like last play type thing. Ugh. Yeah, we don't, I don't we want don't to talk remember, about it. We don't want to remember <laughs> that. So did you Still now you, scars. you had a kind of path forged by your brother for the YU. Were you also thinking that or were you the typical – Typical, you know, high school, they're like, I'm not going to YU. I don't want to learn any more of this and that. I want this one curriculum. I mean, or did you also at this point say, you know, why you? I'm ready to continue playing ball. It's a great place for me. Honestly, I was, I wasn't really thinking about it un- like until I was in Israel. Like, that's kind of when I decided to go. Like, I was, I was also going to go like to S- like the community college, like in LA and do that route. Um, like, while I was in Israel, I decided to go to YU. And would you would you have been able to play ball at, at community college? Yeah, definitely. There's or, or so, somewhere around there, like I'm not not really that place, but somewhere, you know. Right. So so why you okay? So senior year, you're going to why you, and we're going to get to the whole why you and in, in the in the run and everything. So then Avi, is it? So do you have a choice, or is it like you know Steinmetz is already you know. Coach Simon says already knows you're coming. He have a bedroom he have in your house yet? You. He has to have to send you the free Maccabee gear and you know the menorahs and everything else that they send you. Like, like how how does that work? You you already know where you're going, or is North Carolina still? He leads in the NBA. He's skipping right. college. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is he declaring on the podcast? <laughs> Excellent. He's taking his talents to the NBA. No, what what so what what do you obviously you know your future is bright and wide open, but you know do you feel like why you here I come or you know that's uh another story um honestly i have no idea yet i still have two years to decide so keeping options open oh look at him he is like by the way where I do you like take it. his pr course somebody somebody call shashevsky yeah seriously wow He's not ready to declare so but obviously why you you know how, how do you actually this is a good question avi good question i, I think of it myself it's, no it's great it's yeah it's no, a great please. question how do you feel 
seeing the change in YU basketball, seeing the publicity that your brothers have gotten and the program has gotten, has that been as, and this is, you know, as a 10th grader, has this been like, wow, YU is like the Mecca of Jewish basketball right now. Like it is unbelievable. You know, like how have you seen that, you know, develop in front of you and such closely to have your brothers there? Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. I remember, um, when Simcha was, uh, packing to go to Israel from New York, he had like pictures from his freshman year and there was one person in the crowd behind him. Um, and it wasn't your parents cause they were in LA. So no, it was like one person on the computer also. Um, <laughs> and then a few years later, like the, the, like the whole stands are full. So it's pretty cool. Like to see it like evolve almost like around him. Um, and yeah, that, that, that was pretty cool. Right. So that's, yeah, I mean, that, and by the way, that's, that's what, what, um, what Elliot said or coach diamonds, I don't know what the proper words are to, to some of you, he's coached to some of you, he's like, has been coached, whatever. We'll get to that another story, but you know, to see the program have changed like simply. So you, you must have seen, like your brother said, you started with like, all right, you're playing while you ball. That's cool. And then tell us how has, has that, you know, the evolution of it been to see, you know, what has, has happened in amongst your four years or whatever, many years you were there at the program. How did, how did that, you know, unfold? Yeah, it's obviously, I'll be hit it on the nose. It's crazy how nobody, really nobody cared my first year. Nobody gave a crap. We lost our first, we lost, we lost in the first round of the playoffs. Um, it was, it was just, it was, nobody cared. Nobody, there was gyms, the games were empty, home games were empty. And by senior year, every single game was absolutely nuts. Um, the, the home playoff games are a different atmosphere. I never played in a gym like that before. Um, it's just been, it's been an incredible turnaround to see what winning can do to a program. It's crazy. Right. Now that, now that it's kind of, it's in the rear of your mirror, do you, do you look bad and it's hard for the perspective? How old are you? 22, 23? 23. 23. 22. So do, yeah. is it like, do you, can you have that perspective to be like, wow, that, that was so special in, I really help create that because I mean, I, I'm not just saying this coach Diamond said it, you, you know, you coming there really forward the path for the others, like, you know, a Ryan Terrell to another California kid to come out to really see why you is cool. Like, you know, that's, yeah. I don't know, as a 23 year old, if you get that perspective. No, that. it's, yeah, it's great. I think it's really going to hit me. Like, we'll see how long it lasts for it. See if, if it really can really makes it a, a dynasty or, or not. Um, so we'll see what happens, but it, I, it does feel great to have, some sort of blueprint in it, even in, in this current winning streak that they're on. Like, it's weird to think that I, I was part of that, the first 29, 29 games of that, you know, I, I contributed to a lot of those wins, which is yeah. And, and by, by the way, so it's far, also, far out of, out, of, out of here from now, but yeah, it's crazy. It's also amazing that they've already named it Halper court. So that's actually pretty cool. And that, you know, that <laughs> yeah. you guys have had that mark. I'm, I'm joking. Coach Halpert, if you're out there listening, I know <laughs> that's just, uh, you're still no relation, right? No relation at all. Okay. But it is cool, kind of cool to have. Like, we had Tamir Goodman, and he said his coach said, our uh, coach Katz, who's I know is uh, Donnie's father, the coach. Yeah, Harold, yeah, right. Donnie, yeah. So he said, he said to uh, Tamir, if you come back to Talmudic, we're going to paint your name in the court. So you guys already have that. So you're not the Jewish Jordan, you're the Jewish Halpert. Exactly. So that's exactly. pretty cool. So, so Eitan, so now to you, as far I feel like it's a bachelor dating game. Number two, what is you most likely? Okay. So, what do you, as you're part of the program, right? Last year was the first year. I'm sorry, not the first year. Uh, you, you were part of that run, right? You see what's going on. And you, like in Coach Diamonds had, had told us, or maybe Coach Coleman, you didn't start off as, a, as a, a big time contributor. You kind of built up your way. You had obviously great players in front of you. And then all of a sudden, I know in the playoff game, you, uh, in, the, in, in the tournament, you were starting. So tell us about how that comes as far as, you know, obviously you're numero uno at Charles Hevitt. You're a great player. Then you go to YU and you're going to have to, you know, earn your spot and really take your time to develop. And how is that as a player? Because we have a lot of uh, Yeshiva League players out there listening. You know, how do you check your ego at the door and really trust the program and the process and have faith in yourself? Right. So when I first got to YU, I didn't really play. I didn't play my first year, like very on and off, but I, when it came to end of the season, I, I played zero minutes. I, I, th I thought I should have played a lot more than I played, but zero, like literally zero minutes, like last end of the season. Last year, I was, I started everything, preseason, um, all practices, whatever. We get to the first game and I, I hurt my shoulder. Um, so like that sidelined me for uh, th four or five games. And then 
like my spot, my spot, starting spot was pretty much taken. I, I almost didn't play until like the last, until the last few games of the season again, that, um, just like the, my first year. Um, playoffs started and I, I, I started playing well and I, was, I finally started regaining my minutes. And then, like, by, by the time, like, the second half of our championship, like, that's the first game I started. And I started from then on through the playoffs. Right. So how, how did you how did you maintain that? That Like, obviously, look, as a player, as an athlete, you, you think you deserve to be on the court. I mean, that's just the confidence that helps make you great, right? So how did you maintain that? You know, ugh, do I really want to keep going to practice? Do I want to do this double curriculum? It's like, do I just want to be an 18, 19, 20-year-old, you know, playing – playing ball do I want to put in that like how did you stay with that was did you lean on Simcha a little you know being your brother there and I don't know if he went through similar things in his career why you probably didn't but you know how did you maintain that focus um definitely a lot of ups and downs um emotional for sure definitely a lot like some physical like injury stuff like that um I don't know truth, I, you just have to stay ready that's the truth honestly like um when I wouldn't play these games like it, it would be like the worst feeling ever. And like, and like, especially if you think you should be out there, like you're sitting there watching, it's the, it's the worst feeling ever. And like, and when it comes to practice, like you, like practice was the only time to, to play, you know? So like we would like being ready for practice was so easy. Being ready for games was really hard because it's like right. four hours out of your day and you're not, and you're just sitting down and you, you play for two minutes and like, you can't even feel your legs while you're playing. Like, like it, it's unplayable really. So right. Like every time, so whenever it came to practice time, like that was that was go time. That was like, okay, now I get to go out X, Y, and Z. Like I get to go out those guys today. Like so that, right. that was the mentality. That that is a teaching moment, by the way. And I said, this is we have kids. By the way, I'm just you know this podcast is growing. It's getting bigger. We have kids in literally from third grade who are watching this, and you guys are their heroes. I mean, I'm I'm being honest with you, especially Sim Clan Eight on you playing YU basketball right now, and that's the pinnacle. So. Practice is so important, right? You you got to give it your all because that's when we when we've had the coaches on. That's when you're noticed. That's when you see the little things that, you know, do I have the trust to put this kid in to put this guy in and during a game and and you have to have that ability and go out there and really show that you deserve it. And that's why practice is so important. So so Avi, you have these these role models. Obviously, they they have their heads on straight. You know, how are you dealing with this year with not having a league? With, uh, you know, maybe you're playing some pickup games here and there, but obviously with COVID, it's, you know, changed everything. How have you stayed in shape, focus? Uh, again, you're only in 10th grade, but how has the year been for you uh, at, on a, from an athletic standpoint? Um, so actually yesterday was our first time going live in practice. We got permission to. Um, and we just found out in two weeks we have our first game, first California game. Wow. Um and also, uh, last week we had a uh, Globerman um, um, like scheduled for May. So up until like two weeks ago, like it was definitely like getting ready for that. But like before that, when like we can't go live in practice, like you can't compete with anyone really. Um, you were was, still practicing. Were you still having like scheduled practices or not really? Yeah, but like. It was once a week. It was no contact. It was just drills for like an hour and a half, two hours. Sounds like fun, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does, that, does that keep you sharp, though? I mean, you know, how do you feel about your game right now? Do you feel sharp? Do you feel like, man, we got some work to do the next couple of weeks? Um, yeah, I definitely feel sharp. Um, I know for me, I've been like still playing with like other people. Um, just like maybe I invite one person in my backyard and like we play. Um, Six feet apart, of course, with a mask. Of course, on. Yeah, yeah. with a mask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And a helmet. Um, but I know now I definitely feel good, but I'm, I, I don't think everyone on the team has been doing that. But for me, um, I, I feel good. So. Right. Actually, and I'm looking behind you at some trophies. How does that work in the Halpert house? So is there a room just dedicated to trophies? Like, uh, I mean, I can imagine each of you have, have a few. But but mine, Simcha's, this used to be Simcha's room. Mine are over oh, here. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. <laughs> they didn't retire Simcha's room. They don't have his a jersey room. up there. I got all my jerseys. Oh, my okay. Room. He's got all his game used jerseys. He's saving that for a special day. So then, yeah. Simcha, so you you currently, and uh, again, I'm going to get back to the YU and the run. So you're playing professionally in Israel. When, when did that become something that you said, you know what, this basketball is so much fun at YU. I, I, my game is great, and I, I love the atmosphere, the crowd. When did you think about, you know, professionally, that's what you wanted to do with your career? Uh, it was always 
always on my radar, even when I was a kid, um, just going overseas and playing ball and Israel would be a dream to, to do it in. Um, and it's been, it's been great. Um, it didn't work out exactly the way I wanted to this year. Uh, I ended up, I'm playing third division now. I wanted to play second, um, but I got here a little bit late. So I just ended up signing with the third division team. Um, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm living in Tel Aviv, commuting to my, to my practices. Um, it's, it's been a dream come true. I'm, I'm how how right you now. practice every day? Like they, it's like run like a professional team. Like this is your profession. Yeah. This is what I'm doing full time. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. And then, so there's three divisions in Israel. There's three divisions. Yeah. The first division, like the Maccabi Tel Aviv and like the, the main big city, the, the huge cities with crazy budgets. Um, and second division is, is a little bit less professional, um, but very, but very, uh, still very intense. And the third division is the third division, but, uh, <laughs> the way it works in Israel and, 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 Euro- and, and, uh, in Europe in general is if you win your division, if you're first place, you move up, you move up divisions to the second uh, division. So, so if we a, win this year, soccer league concept. Concept. yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's how's, how it how's your team doing? Um, we just lost our first game. We we're nine to one. We just lost our first game. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's a possibility your team can move up. Yeah. That's the, that's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. Now, if your team moves up, will you stay with the team? Yeah. My contract is guaranteed. That if, if we win, I'm guaranteed on, on the second division team with a, yeah. Now do you have, is, is, is there an agent working this out here or is there like, yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have an agent, um, Daniel Tamir, our assistant coach hooked me up with one of his childhood friends here. Um, and he's been helping me out, getting me contracts and talking to the team for me and all that stuff. So cool. Wow. That, that's yeah, awesome. Great. It's wild. It's wild. And how do you like live? Did, so where you went, where did you go when you were in Israel for the year, your gap year, where were you in school? I was in uh, Bar Ilan, or Makan. So how is this, so, how is it living in Israel yeah, now as a, as an eligible bachelor? I don't know if you're an eligible bachelor, but, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's great. Israel's the best. Israel's the best. Israel's the best. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's a good time. So that, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. So, so Eitan, so you, you, you get your starting spot. You're, you're now you're, now you're rolling with it. You and you and Simcha, you know, you're playing together last year. You have this run. You're on this, you're in this tournament. You're like, Wow, this this is pretty cool. We're playing packed gyms, but now we have a chance to enter the NCAA, um, which is this this past year was the first year you were in, or the second time at YU history. I second don't know. Time. Second time, second time, right? So so you're in it, and now you guys you're looking around the court. You got Ryan, you got Gabe, you got you, you guys have a team, right? You guys are you we're going to compete. How did that work out? As far as all of a sudden now your first game, it's like kind of back to simplest first year. There's one person in the stands, like there's no fans. You're playing in probably your biggest games ever. Tell us about the adjustment, Aton, of playing with no fans and being in such a huge moment. Right. Um, so when we found out going to the tournament that we're going to have no fans, like, I think a lot of guys were upset, but I thought it was, like the, it was the best thing for us. Like, n- no one's in the gym. It's straight ball. Um, like, no distractions. Like, no excuses. Like, nothing to be afraid of or, like, like sh- stage fright. And, like, I thought it was, it was like the – it was almost, it was, I thought it was perfect for us to, to come into, especially like we probably wouldn't have had a lot of fans at all of those games, like very minimal fans. It would have been a hostile environment for us and it, it became a home game for everybody. And I, I thought it was, I thought it was amazing for us. What was it like playing? Yeah. Um, obviously you played with your brother now in high school and college. How different were the two experiences? Um... I mean, first we're definitely different players and very different teams. Like um, we, like in high school, we had a very like is very set offense. So like it was like, this guy the ball to that. Was that? Yes and no. Said, yes it and was no. like get the ball to the simpler. No, that wasn't the. Uh, no, not, really. not really. It was like like we had, our, our coach Colin. Like before Ryan, our, we had we had an amazing coach. He 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 knew so much ball and like like we had. We had a lot of great plays, but there were only plays. So, like, we were, it was very set. Everything was very, like, set in stone. Opposed to, like, when we play, like, and like, when we're playing in, in a tournament, there's just no predictability in what we were doing. So, like, everyone was having such a good game. We were, we were playing unreal, and there's no, nothing anyone could do with us. Like, especially Ryan. Ryan's like 80% from three. I'm shooting well from three. Sim shooting well from three. Gabe's playing well. Like, it was just, it was just like, it was just playing straight basketball. And it was a lot of fun. Right. I mean, that that's, we, we talked with coach Simons. I mean, the motion offense that you guys run and, and he said, and I said to him, I go, 
you know, it looks like during the game, you're not like really like you don't get up. You don't you don't you don't call this out of that. He's like, it's like I they, they know everything from practice. He goes, if they need to be told what to do now, then I'm not doing my job. And that's that's how you guys operate. I mean, you're you're just running off screens. You're going back door. You guys are you're finding your spots to get open. I mean, that's an amazing thing that you guys can can work within an offense like that. And and also, I assume there's also some creativity you get to have as well, also to find the open area to get your shot off. Right. I mean, definitely. We have five guys that really know how to play ball, like as individuals, but like just understanding the whole concept of the game, like passing and moving, like we were just, we were just hitting a different stride. Right. Also, it's pretty ironic that we have, we have like one or two plays and Ellie doesn't even know them. <laughs> he, he, you haven't told him to play? Or no, he, he couldn't draw it up. He couldn't draw it up if he, if he left it yeah. on it. He could not oh. sit there and put X in the nose and tell us what the play was. Oh Never. my gosh. That's hysterical. Yeah. So, so tell us about, so playing with Ryan Terrell, who obviously is, you know, a, di- a different caliber athlete, right? I mean, I know he's doing high school. In high school, he's doing 360 dunks, and he's like, you know, doing things alley-oops. I mean, you know, more than just the Jewish dunk where you kind of lay it in. I mean, he's putting it down. He's doing, you know, highlight films. How is it playing with a player like that who Coach Diamond said is unselfish and, like, you know, unassuming superstar? How is it, you know, but this is for both simply and Eitan as far as, you know, playing with a player like that? I'll use him. Um, shall I take it? Uh, I think it, the unselfishness really can't, came from the culture that we built at YU, that building your own stats don't mean anything. What you do, it doesn't mean, as long as you win, is all that matters. Um, and just winning is, is the culture there. And so it's easy for Ryan to come in there and just jump right into the culture, be part of the team, just be part of the family and, and, and just move on from there. Um, but playing with Ryan, he, he's a special talent. Um, but we've seen Ryan our whole lives. We saw him as a little kid. We know exactly like who he is, what he does. Um, so like, we're not like it doesn't surprise us when, when he does big things like that. But uh, we, we we know who he is. We know what he can do. We're used to right. It. Yeah, I think you know what's interesting about that. Listen, from the time you're five years old, no matter what sport you play, hopefully any good coach you have is telling you that winning is the most important thing. Not uh. Right. You know, not how many points or assists you have or how many home runs you hit or any of those types of things. The irony is when you look at YU, I mean, the proof is in the pudding because anybody could have come through YU and scored 75 points a game. And if they didn't win, nobody would have known about it because YU was never yeah. on the map. Like you said, when you got there, there was one fan in the stands. What's built yeah. there is not how many points a game guys are scoring. It's literally just winning. Um, yeah. You know, and that's 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 college basketball at the highest level. I, I mean... Uh, I don't know if that's something that uh, you know. Simply the way you described it before, it's it's fairly that, that's fairly tangible. Yeah. Well, that, that actually also like like how do you guys feel? And again, uh, I'll go eight time for this. So, do you feel like you're representing the Jewish people? Because I mean, as someone who's been involved in, or played watch basketball my whole life, you know, you now you guys, I mean, you guys are representing. You're getting the media. We'll get to the streak and everything. But like, do you feel like you know you you have to hold yourself at a certain level? I think it's very tough right now when the gyms are completely empty, but last year, like during, like during our run, we definitely like you really like a lot of eyes were on us. We're getting a lot of attention. Like <clears throat> we were seeing it. I think now, like I think Mac lives gets a lot of hits on the, on their, on like their streams, like a ton of people are watching, but it's definitely not the same when like you, it's, you see everybody there like going nuts. Right. But, but, but you do question. Yeah, you I do definitely. feel it. Hundred yeah, percent. When you're, when you're home and you're walking in, in the streets in LA, you like you you feel like a little kid. You you, you know it's there. Hundred yeah. percent. Right. So that's I mean that's right. And these are you know you're 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 college kids and you have a lot of responsibility put on your shoulders. So so you you get you get to the tournament and you guys are you're running through. I mean you guys all of a sudden you know everyone even the casual not not the the nuttiness of us who like just love basketball but the casual observers like wow this YU team is something special like you know we could win a tournament okay division three two whatever it is this is i mean it's i know it's division three but i'm saying this is huge so you, you you're you're cruising along you're in the sweet 16 simply how, how did it feel to have this dream broken you know that you cannot go on any further not because of a loss not because the team was on their side was better because of of circumstance yeah that's what that's what really hurt the most you know not just being able to leave it all on the court and give everything you got you know, I'd be I'd be okay with that. If a team came in there and we we gave it our best effort and we just camped a little short, I'd be fine with me. You know, at least we, at least we had a chance to to at least we had a chance. You know, the fact that we we found out 
four uh, on the fourth hour of a five hour trip to Virginia on the bus to play that game. So we're on the way there. We're getting hyped. We're all excited. And then the Rudy Gobert news dropped and every other league just canceled. And we were just, we were just crushed. Absolutely and and for, crushed. for you, you're, did you know then you were done? I mean, I don't know if you had an extra year of algebra. I don't know. Yeah, what no, I knew I was done. I knew that was my last year no matter what. And, right. and the fact that my career ended like on a bus is just absolutely just nuts, you know? Right. And eight, so had it, right. So you had that same, same thing, but you know, okay, I have next year. We'll fast forward to next year. So now you're, you're in a season where you don't know if it's a season, but you guys are still practicing five days a week, early in the morning. How do you stay committed on, under that, those circumstances? All right. It's definitely tough. Um, <laughs> I think the, it just comes down to, we all, we all want to play. Like that, that's just what it comes down to. Like we all want to be here. We all want to be playing these games. Um, I think if, if guys didn't on team, didn't want to be playing, they wouldn't, it's Elliot would have no hard feeling. He said, it, he said it multiple times, like you guys don't like no hard feeling. You guys don't need to be here this year. But if you guys want, like want to be here, like be all in. I think we, we, we really are all in this year. It's like, that's why it's like easy to get up and like be like being that, like I wouldn't be in the Heights right now. If it wasn't for b- the ball team, you know? Right. Uh, like I'd be back in LA. Do you, so like, do you I, know how, like, cause is your season like kind of being pieced together as it goes on? I know like, cause you're like, yeah, play this. so it's all, it's all like you wait, you say you wake up, you don't know who you're playing, when you're playing or how, how it's going to be. Literally our, our game, we scheduled two days ago for the 17th. Like this morning, we just found out it's canceled. Like we're literally adding and taking away games every single day. Right. And, and how do you, how do you feel about the streak? I mean, I know obviously simply mentioned he was part of 29 of them. I mean, he did get that number in. And so, you know, now you have, you're carrying on the, the, uh, the how, I mean, the YU winning streak. And uh, how, how does that work? Do you guys feel the pressure of that? Not, not, not really. Like when I step back and think about it, like, wow, like, if we lost that game, that would have ruined our 35 streak. Like, wow, like that, that's a 35 and one, you know, that root that taints it. Um, but like when we're actually playing, like, I don't know, like, no, none of that's really in my head. Like we're, we're just out there, like we're just trying to, we're trying to win, you know, that's just what it got, comes down to. It's pretty simple. Right. Um, let me ask the, the numbers. What are what are the numbers you guys all wear, and uh, and why? Simply, we'll start with you. Uh, I've worn twenty from the start. Um, my favorite player growing up was Malin Ginobili, also lefty. Lefty, um, right? So twenty's always been my number. You look like him a little. I mean, you have more hair. He's balding now that he's a yeah a veteran. Yeah. All right, different nose. So what- different nose. Mine's right. mine, mine swirls to the left. His swirls to the right. You know, <laughs> better. Way way better. <laughs> What about you, Aton? What number are you? Fifteen or? Yeah, f- fifteen. Um, um, my favorite player is Vince Carter. I, I always loved his game, so like, that's why I wear it. Do you dunk like him, or or dunk like him now that he's fifty? Um, <laughs> off a of trampoline, I'm pretty close. <laughs> right. but other than that, and struggling. struggling. Wait, and now, and now we're Avi. Do you? I'm I'm guessing. I can already see how the Halperts work. We don't take the other person's number. We we pave our own path. What number are you, and why? Uh, I'm number thirty-five. Um, cause, um, after like KD, I got when I was younger and always stuck with it. That's, that's, uh, those are, those are good people. Good reasons to have those numbers. Right, that, so, was good, that was a good, uh, that was a good guess there. That, uh, good assumption. What, that they weren't all the same number? Yes. Correct. Yes. Right. Oh, I got lucky. Well, I assume now wait, is, uh, does Shaw have it retire numbers or, or they don't really do that yet? Uh, kind of. Ryan told me as long as he's there, like I wore number three in high school because um, like I, I couldn't wear number 15. And like he said, like while he's there, no one will wear number three again. So oh, I'm, there I'm, you I'm go. in the rafters right now. I don't, I, I don't <laughs> think Sim, Sim or Avi's there. <laughs> not yet. Not yet, at least. Not right. Ryan, right. Yeah. Avi, you, ha- you still yet. have some time. Don't worry. So now what's now the next question for uh, for the eligible bachelors? Simcha, Yeshiva Leaguer. You, you played in Saracek, so you obviously played against a lot of East Coast schools. Greatest player or toughest opponent player you ever played against, competed against? Yeshiva League, so I it can't be Ryan Terrell. Yeshiva League. So Yeshiva League is like Frisch, Hafter, DRS, you know, back right. in the, you know how it rolls. Eitan and Avi, get ready for the same question, just so you have a little question, love. yeah. Um, you can give me two if you want, if you want to. Like, I have two nice. right now. I have now. <laughs> My senior year, I, I didn't play at Sarah Tech because I, I broke my wrist in Sarah Tech, so I didn't really play. And then my junior year, we just flew out and we just played a couple of games there instead of going to Sarah Tech. And we played two tough games. We played against um, 
Justin Hode, who was in his senior year, who was killed us, destroyed us. He like 36 and he went and to Frisch, right? Shoes. Yeah, he went to Frisch. He had 36, and right after the game, he took his shoes off, put on cleats, and went to go play soccer. Oh, I thought you were so, gonna uh, say he signed them and gave them to you. <laughs> no, I would have been pissed. Um, and then I had a and the next game after that, he played against MTA. He played against I'm forgetting it. Uh, lump, big, big lump. He's like a power forward center, just could shoot and move the ball. And he, he also hurt us a lot. But it's a good I remember right now off the top of my head. Okay. Eitan, you, who are who, your two, your Steve Beleaguer's toughest, toughest or greatest players you played against? Um, in Sarajak, the refs always <laughs> out to get us. That's for sure. Definitely throwing that. that out there. Um, <laughs> two players. My eleventh eleventh grade year, we played the DRS, the Gabe, and um, the the other big the Gabe, the Beatles. You mean yeah. John Lennon Towers. and the others? Yeah, we know. Yeah, I, but I think that's the most overrated team ever, and I thought we should have won that game. I'm just pointing out there, but like just just playing as those two bigs, like you couldn't even move on the court. Like hold on, Jay, decided, man, send us to Gabe Life for after the show. Yeah, go yeah. on. <laughs> I say him all the time. They just sat in the paint the entire game. We, we literally couldn't even move. Like, literally couldn't move. Um, that's, like, that's like one. That's a like Gabe. I'll, put, I'll throw Gabe. Two, like, I don't know. We, we never played, like, one. We never played a guy that, like, our home team was focused against. That's the truth. Like, we, we played. Even with had, Globerman and Sarachek, there wasn't, like, one guy who you're like, wow, this, this kid is special. Like It know? wasn't like we need, yeah, we need got us one guy. Like, maybe this is the teams that we play. I don't know. But we definitely played a lot of good teams. Like, my senior year, like, we played a, a good first team, like, I don't think they had one star. They had like they had five good players. Like that that's just what it was. Like, I can't think of one like player specifically. All right. So you took a shot at Gabe and you gave him gave him uh gave him a little props also. Now so uh, Ari, okay. who was the guest that we had that that called out that team and said that they were great? With the DRS team? Yeah. Uh Ryan was wrong. Ryan it was, was wrong. Coach. It was Coach Coleman. Okay. Yeah. We, you know, it's it, you know it, listen, I'll I'll back up what you're saying a little bit because uh Ari and I saw that team play a, a lot that year. Um, we always commented Ari during games about how well coached they were, and I think, uh, you know, both statements can be can be true at the same time. Uh, obviously, Gabe was uh, tremendous uh, that In year, every but sense. <laughs> there were a lot of the other players on that team. I mean, they weren't like you know as as single players. They didn't blow they you away with talent. Team. They were they played as a team. They all knew their but roles. The way that they were coached. And the way that they played together as a, as a unit, uh, yes, that no, was... I, I think when it comes to Gabe and five towns and anyone in DRS, like it's just more infatuation over how good they are actually at ball. Because if you come to that, Jojo Fallis should be the best, the best right. player. Right, it's just that the then. West Coast Ever. bias. We didn't see him. Right, we didn't see him it's as much. What, yeah, it's true. Like there's just there was so much infatuation, or, infatuation around that team. Like I, I think it made them ten times better. Honestly. Like, right, but the, they also, they, also they're, they're very good. They they really didn't lose a game. They won thirty. Like they won right, they won every game. tournament. They won Cooper every tournament, every game. game. They didn't lose. Right, no, they dude, lose one game. definitely a great team. Like no one's saying that. Like they were big. Yeah. Like they had good guards. They were long, but like big shots. Like, you have you have Deutsch who played one year at YU with us. Right, team. right, right. They had right Ben on me, Brody. They uh, little two. They had they had a All great team. Yeah. So, okay, so clearly Aton has still has beef fund against that team, but it's okay. You, know, you lost because of the refs, not because of Gabe. It's totally understand. We got that. that game. That game was a total <laughs> blowout. They, they swallowed us. Wait, but we did it? A did shot, it did they go lay up? Hold on. Wasn't it also one year? Shall have it won on a terrible call on a foul or something? Was that Zach Muller's? I don't know. I remember there was. No, that was my senior year. We lost on a blocking foul. Oh, you okay? So now I remember yeah. that. That was a terrible call. Terrible yeah, call. Terrible. Okay, yeah. so that's right. They hit a foul shot. They should never have been shooting at, at like no time left. Okay, Avi, you're only in tenth grade, but you were in Globerman last year. Um, I'm sure you know a lot of East Coast ballers. This is going to be a little harder for you because you're going to have to still play and compete against these guys. So, who would you say is uh, which is Shiva League or maybe from Globerman last year um, has been you know the most impressive that you've seen in, um, someone whose game is you know you would say is is uh, above above and beyond his peers. Um. I only played against like four Yeshiva Yeshiva League teams. Um, but probably Zachheim. Um, just because he took over championship game. All right. Coach Coleman still has nightmares. He told us you were up by 18 and then he he blacked out or something. Someone else came to coach that game when he was <laughs> in the hot solo mobile. And then right. I remember that. So okay, so those are some 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 great ballers. So 
We also, we want to mention as we're wrapping things up, um, Aton Halpert is, uh, he is opening up his resume as far as uh, professional services. He's looking for a, for a job in, what, what, what are you majoring in, Aton? Majoring in finance. In finance, that, that can co- cover a lot of things. Now, Ari, so, don't give out his phone number on the air, please. I'm not, you know, I'm you know not like doing that. We're not asking the social status or anything, just professionally. He is, uh, he is opening to uh, his resume out there to uh, the millions of viewers who are watching this podcast. So that is now, something. Now, one thing we cannot end this show because uh, we let it slide when Avi just kind of came in there and said, I'm going to be the best in a couple of years. Uh, I think we have to give Simcha and Eitan a chance to to reply to that. I, we we can't just you know we can't just take right, it. Is that he, he better be. He better be. He had four trainers, three trainers <laughs> growing up with him all day, taking in the practices, working out with him. He better be the best. By the Avi, I see Avi's shoulders going down because all the weight on his shoulders he has now from Simcha's <laughs> statement. Eitan, you feel the same? He got no choice. One hundred percent. Wow. All right, so yeah, move over number three in the rafters, number 35. It's uh, or as long as you don't change your number like Durant to seven, you know, you can stick with one number, it's easier like that. Yeah, all right, so Avi, the weight, the weight, the pressure of the Halpert brothers is, is uh, it's being put on you, but we, we want to thank you guys and Simcha, you know, again, why you, you really helped resurrect that program, and that's not from us, that's from one of your biggest fans, Coach Steinmetz. Coach Coleman has speaks highly of all of you guys. I mean. He he's just unfortunately upset. There's no more Halperts uh, coming up until you guys get married and have big families. And obviously you'll send them to shall have it. But uh, no, thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for the guys playing at YU representing the Jews and, you know, keep that winning streak going. And Avi, I'm happy to hear you have a, a season God willing coming up and you guys should continue to set examples for everyone out there to uh, stay hard, work hard, stay on your craft and uh, aspirations and dreams can become reality. So Thank you. And Jay, listen, I, I thought that we were going to get I, th- I knew we were going to get some drama. You know, you put three three generations of helpers. I knew we were going to get some drama, but they threw more shade at everybody else than each other. You know, yeah. By the Aton, Aton clearly has a beef still from DRS. Oh, they, so. I, oh, they, they, they must have some interesting practices. Right, exactly. But no, but you you really saw like it was like a behind the scenes uh, look at, at the helpers and, you know, Avi. You know, his his he's looking up to two brothers who are like, you know, in the spotlight doing their thing. And and like Coach Coleman said, Avi Avi could have the brightest future of them all. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see brothers though, where they could just go, you know, and they're not these guys aren't 50. You know, Simcha's 23. I don't add Adam all three together, they up to 50. Right. Simcha's 23, and he could just go, No, no, he better be the best one. That's uh that's a great, that's a great support system. And it, you know, it, it's no accident. Again, we talked about this on our last show. It's no accident that people end up where they end up. You know, with that kind of support, there's there's a reason why, uh, you know, you get one brother, yeah, they, you get I mean, the look, next brother. Correct. They're pushing each other. They're pushing each other. And it, it could be more than basketball. It could be three brothers who want to be lawyers. You know, they all want to they want to one up. They want to, you know, make their family proud and do do the best they can. I mean, they are the first family of L.A. basketball. And listen, uh, thank you for not only for them coming on, but another thank you to Coach uh, Ryan Coleman for you know, having that idea and orchestrating uh, the offense. Listen, this was not, this is not, you know, LA and Israel are uh, 10 hours apart. So to, to make this, to make Throw this happen, New York was, with Aton yeah, is, this was not easy, but, uh, but they were we so accommodating. It, yeah. We, we made it work and we're super happy. And Ari, again, we got to thank God to get a bagel. I only got, I got to tell you something. I didn't get through this whole thing here. But one of these things was like a like a Danish with with uh, with with chocolate. Oh, like it was like a Ruggelach Danish chocolate. Phenomenal. It's half gone. I'm going to go eat the other half. Uh, and of course, a huge thank you to Gary Mandel, who, you know, he wanted this episode. He cherry picked this episode uh, to sponsor because of, uh, you know, how how uh, how much he, he said he's had both both Halper, uh, Simcha and Aton in his house. They, he actually said, and this is a, a quote. Or text, I guess you can call it a quote. That's cool. Not, he he goes, they're amazing basketball players, better individuals, better people. I mean, that's we, exactly what he said. So we that's saw that over the last hour. The Abba and Ima Halpert as well. They raised they raised great kids. I joked around in the open, but you know, if uh, any immigration things, uh, personal injury, Gary's a great guy. You got give Gary a call, and of course, uh, the Lions Den. Uh, yes. If you're looking for a a workout program in a Torah environment, no, that's a different thing. No, I. Uh, we, we always spread Torah wherever we're working. So that's yes. Uh, 
reach out to the Lions then. Basketball programs, workout programs, the whole thing. If you see the phenomenal shape of the guy on that side of the screen, uh, you know, the apple. No, no. Yeah. Mm, the apple doesn't fall far from. Well, that's about all he eats is apples and lettuce. So that's. Uh, and I eat trees. That's, yeah. And, and uh, the ball is basketball academy. Listen, we all know what it's like to have their kids home during COVID for a year. So uh, end of the summer, you know, you had them away for, for seven weeks. Uh, what's one right. more? What's a what's few more days? More, really? Ballers Basketball Academy. Ari, is that the sales them. pitch? Get the kids out of the house? Send them yeah. to me? I mean, that's what we do. We want to get rid of them. We want them to improve in whatever they want to do. And basketball is a great thing. Great, great, great uh, opportunity. And by the way, we should wish everyone, I, I think it's almost a happy uh a I happy bo- Yes. I, I, see, Ari, we're so like, we're like <sighs> simpatico, me and you. Seriously? But uh, yes. Whatever that is, means. Yes, it's uh, words. Uh, this is the last episode uh, before Pesach. Is that correct? It is. It is. I, I kind of did it in my mind. And uh, also, by the way, if you if you are interested in, uh, as I said, and, and thank you for all our fa- our all fans, our supporters, our viewers, that the numbers are growing. If you and we uh, we've reached almost over a thousand episodes on our last episode, and again, a thousand episodes, views, a thousand viewers on our episodes. We've only had a few out five five or so six. And if you're looking to advertise, call. Uh, no, I'm sorry. DM the Yeshiva League Pass on Instagram, their website, Yeshiva League Pass. I mean, let us know and we will uh, get you all that information. Listen, uh, Jewish advertising. It's the most targeted advertising you could find. Uh, you absolutely. know, the stats on our audience, pretty similar, pretty direct. So, yes, right? yes. And uh, so we will be off next week. As alluded to, we will not have a new episode come out uh, over Cholomoid. But the week after Pesach, we'll oh, be back. Big news. Big, we... big guests coming back yes some big yes. some big names some big names can't talk the, about the nba yet. the nba is coming i'm just oh yeah it's it. so there, there may be some jewish ballers in the nba there may be possibly it, um no but uh some big guests coming up leading into the summer so uh final stretch kiss the snow goodbye kiss us goodbye because we're out of here until next week i mean the week after that you know what i mean <laughs> have a great pace yeah everybody.